All right, uh, number 11, I'm just going to do uh, like the the uh, name of the video says. I'm just going to do it short and sweet, uh, right to the point here. So um, similar to problem 10 where we're, we're firing an arrow this time, um, but our initial velocity has an angle to it. So we're no longer just horizontal. So we need to, uh, first we need to draw our diagram. So we've got our, uh, let's go red. Again, we're coming out at 25 degrees and uh, 80 meters per second. Uh, let me change that just real quick, actually. Um, I want to show that we're starting at 1.5, so 1.5 meters. Our vector of 80 here. And um, if you want to show, there's our 25 degree angle. So if you trace this arrow out, it's going to go up a little ways and then come back down. And the question is, how far away does the arrow strike the ground? So here is our D from uh, from start to finish. It doesn't ask anything about how high does it go, how long is it in the air, it just asks how far away does it strike the ground. So our horizontal component is going to be our initial velocity, AD, times cosine of our angle, 25. Um, then 80 sine 25. So um, at its core, this is the horizontal component of our 80 meters per second. This is our vertical component. Again, if you need to know or are wondering why, just watch, watch the first couple minutes of um, the video on number 10. So in order to put this into the x1t and a y1t, uh, we just copy that over. And then we add our times t. 80 sine 25 times t. Now, in the x direction, that's all we have. No gravity, no initial height, no nothing. It's our y1 here, where we're going to have to take into account gravity. Or negative uh, 4.9, how about t squared, not m squared. Um, you know, take these, move them over. Because um, we also have an initial height, so 1.5. So in this problem, um, all we have is horizontal component 80 cosine 25t, and our vertical component is 80 sine 25t. Then we have our gravity minus 4.9t squared, and an initial height 1.5. So now let's go to our graphing calculator. Um, that's from, from problem 10. Let me clear it out, both of them. So horizontal component was 80 times cosine of 25 times t, and our vertical component 80 times sine 25 times t. And then we had minus 4.9 t squared. And we had our uh, initial height component. And now we're going to change our window. Let's go back to 10 seconds because um, it's a lot easier to um, evaluate. Um, let's also change our window because we're no longer 200 meters per second at, at 50 degrees. Um, it's a lot less speed and a little bit shorter angle. Um, so let's go. Uh, let's cut that down from 5,000 to 500. And while we're at it, we'll change our uh, our y maximum. And let's cut that from 2,000 to 200. So um, make sure our graph is right. Um, and there it is. Um, so there again, there's our path of our arrow. And as you can see, our height is actually plenty high. I'll cut that in half. Um, and as you can see, it's not super clear whether or not we've got enough. So I'm just going to jump that up to 
Um, let's go 550. You can go 600 if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just so long as we see the trail of our arrow land and cross the x-axis before the edge of our window. All right, so let's go back real quick. Question, make sure we're answering the question. How far does the arrow travel? Um, so in the calculator, uh, we're going to trace. And let's go back to that standard three seconds that we were doing before. Okay, three is nowhere near enough, so we're going to go right to six. Six is close, so I'm going to go seven. Seven is too far, so seven seconds is negative. Uh, but 6.9 is is positive. So um, here's where I'm going to use that table again. Um, I'm going to go right to my table. I'm going to start my table at 6.9 because I know that's that's above ground. So second window, um, 6.9 seconds. And again, our T step or our delta table is 0.01. So second graph gives us our table. And if you look, um, at 6.9 seconds we were positive, at uh, 7 seconds we were negative, but we can be more specific. I'm going to look at it, and at 6.95 is the first time we're negative. Um, but the question is, how far has it traveled? Um, so if you look at that, uh, I'm going to say 503.18, uh, or just 503. So go back to our question. Horizontal distance to the nearest meter. Well, I'm going to say 503. Um, we can go even further in our T-step, but I'm just going to call it good there. So we went 503 meters. Now if it asked how long was it in the air, that's where you'd say 6.94 seconds, um, so on. So you could, you could pull a lot of data off of this, um, but that is that is the short condensed version of number 11.